Well, interestingly, you can do other numbers. For instance, you can start with a 2 first and then a 1 and then add those to get 3 and add 1 and 3 to get 4 and add 3 and 4 to get 7. And if you add 4 and 7, you get 11, which might be represented by a jack. Now, I have random suits here. That almost works. And in fact, these are also famous numbers. They're called the Luca sequence. They're related to the Fibonacci numbers. Instead of starting with 1 and 2, you start with 2 and 1. These numbers almost work. But remember I told you at the beginning that we can't use 1, 2, 3, and 4 because of the ambiguity of 5 occurring from that pair and that pair. But we can take care of that by just not using the 2. Bye-bye, 2. An ace, a three, a four, a seven, and a jack of random suits, or any suits you choose to remember, works very well. That you can do for a pre-performance. Uh, you can have five, as mentioned before, without the ace on the top, and those five underneath. You can do the trick twice. Different cards appear. You look like a genius. Has anyone who didn't know the setup ever cracked this straight away? Has anyone ever, have you ever shown this trick to someone and they've gone, oh, you must have used Fibonacci numbers, and, you, and they'd figured it out? No. But um, I can tell you this, I, I used to have an information sheet about this which I would make available at, at you know, math circle meetings and so on. And I, I found it was, a, it was a big mistake to give the sheet out ahead of time because people would pick it up. The more mathematically sophisticated like postgraduate students would pick it up, look at it, read it and go, oh, that's obvious. Well, that's like reading the punchline of, of a joke by your favorite comedian. Of course it's obvious when you've read it. But if you don't see it coming, there's mileage to be gained from that, and the, the magic has the same effect. There's actually other sets of numbers you can do it with, but here's a particularly obvious one, and this was used in magic tricks uh, maybe back in the 1920s, 1930s. The numbers 1, 2, 4, and 8 have a very special property. They're actually powers of 2. Now, a modern audience is so sophisticated that people know about binary numbers, they know about powers of 2. So with these numbers, everything can be decomposed into a sum of powers of two. So if you had people pick two cards from this and they gave you the total, you'd know what the numbers were. The next one is 16, but of course we don't have a 16 in a deck of cards, so we have to stop at eight. It's a little too obvious today. People are more sophisticated. You could also do it with powers of three. One, um, three, and nine, because every number is uniquely expressible as a sum. Well, it's a little tricky there because you'd have to use multiple ones and multiple threes. And that gets, gives us a difficulty because if somebody, if the total is 10, you know it's a 9 plus a 1, but you don't know which ace it is if two aces are in the mix. That's why while Fibonacci numbers officially start 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, for me, for this trick, it starts 1, 2, 3, 5, because I can't have two aces in the mix because I would never know which one you picked. You need to be able to do a false shuffle, and I'll do it one more time here as we're talking. So maybe those are the magic cards I want at the top. So you have to be able to do a riffle shuffle. That's a little hard if your hands are small. Young children have a difficulty doing a riffle shuffle because cards are a standard size. But if you can do this and just drop a whole bunch from your right hand at the end, except you do it in such a way that people don't see it. Just talking loudly actually has a, has a pretty good effect because people look at your face and they don't see the cards. So you know, just saying something dramatic to get their attention. Distraction is, is a key element in magic. And this is a combination of mathematics and magic. It's a mathematical trick. It's based on a sound mathematical principle. If you want to strip it down to the bare essentials of mathematics, it's just about the fact that Fibonacci numbers have this special property. They actually have a better property. I showed you how other sets of numbers also work. Uh, but the Fibonacci numbers have an extra special property that makes them extremely interesting, extremely unique. And I didn't know this until about eight or nine years ago. I was teaching from a book called The Heart of Mathematics by Ed Berger and Mike Starbert, which is a beautiful, wonderful book. And it mentions something called the Zeckendorf representation, which I'd never heard of. And in fact, it's not that well known among mathematicians. And that w it says that every positive whole number can be uniquely written as a sum of Fibonacci numbers under two conditions. You don't use any Fibonacci number twice, and you don't use uh, two adjacent consecutive Fibonacci numbers. And it's really the analog of the theorem for multiplication that says that every number is uniquely expressible as a product of primes. And of course, if you have a prime, you're quite happy. Seven factors as seven, but 12 factors as two times two times three. Every number is a sum of Fibonacci numbers. 13 is a Fibonacci number, so you don't mess with it. But you know, 12 is, well, what is 12? Well, it can be broken down into a sum of Fibonacci numbers. Now, the biggest one you can take off is eight, and you're left with four and then you keep repeating. It's a greedy algorithm, so you get eight plus three plus one. I wouldn't get a total of 12 in the card trick I showed you with two people chose cards, but the number 12 has unique representation in terms of Fibonacci numbers with two rules. Never use one twice and never use adjacent ones. So you don't break the eight up into five plus three. For 12, it's eight plus three plus one, and you leave it like that. 
And that's a fascinating property that's not true for the other sets of numbers I showed you. So looking at the six numbers that we uh, base the basic little fibs trick on, you might ask, is it possible for more than two people to select cards? And you would know what the cards were. Well, these are six numbers and we, we know what they all are and we could figure out what they add up to. In fact, they add up to 32 if you do the maths. So uh, what would happen if three cards were picked? Well, it, there's many possibilities, obviously. Um, it, it turns out that the totals are more or less all different, but not quite. If somebody picked the ace, the two, and the king, they would add up to 16, but that's also true for somebody who picked the three, the five, and the eight. So when you play this with three people picking cards, you run the risk of this happening. It turns out it's the only possible hitch. So you, you can do this, and if it happens, you have some choices. You have to fish for a little more information. So you might say, does anybody have a heart? And there's no hearts over here. So if the answer is yes, you can say, ah, I think two of you have hearts. And then you can reveal what the three cards are. And if somebody says no, you can say, I knew you were a heartless audience, or make a joke like that. And then you can announce the cards are these. But in all other cases, you will get a distinct sum. Now it's four sounds harder. Imagine if you had four people pick cards. Doubly impressive. Wouldn't it be doubly impressive if you could identify four cards randomly picked by four people from six, which admittedly you've held at the top of the deck, but it still sounds like a good trick. Well, the good news is it's no harder than two. And here's the reason. If you pick any four cards, maybe those four, they add up to something. And you're told what the total is. Now you have to decompose four on the fly, quickly. That may not be so easy. Is it even possible? Well, the reason it's possible is they picked four they didn't pick two. They tell you what these four add up to, subtract it from 32, the total of all the cards. Okay, so if those four numbers add up to 21, 21 subtracted from 32 leaves 11. So the two cards that weren't picked, which I don't see, add up to 11, but I know that's the eight and the three. And by elimination, I know that this is the one, the two, the five, and the king. And then I just have to remember my four suits. Now you don't know who got which one, but you don't advertise that fact. You can, you can identify them. You can say, who had a heart? Who had a king? Who had a five? And then you can name the card completely. People will remember it as you identified all four of their cards. Molecules went into the atmosphere and floated around and eventually got up to 30 kilometers high. And when they got there, this molecule would absorb UV light and expel the chlorine atoms.